This is MTG Burgeoning, and in this video we are going to update and upgrade our Morph in the Boundless Changeling Tribal EDH deck. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Up and Up series. Today we are updating and upgrading our Morph in the Boundless Changeling Tribal EDH deck. We are continuing the process of going all in tribal with this build. And if you caught the last few episodes of the Up and Up series here, you know where we're going. We are depowering this deck by making it more flavorful. But by depowering, that does not mean that it still can't hold its own at the EDH table. And if you don't believe me, well, you can go skulking around in the description below. You can click the link to this build's deck tech. You can click the link to this build's deck list, which is updated to the moment. And you can also click the link to this build's video primer series. We have some changes here. We have our deck. We have our changeling pool. If you are unfamiliar with the scope of this build or what is a changeling pool... Well, very quickly, we have 106 different tribes represented in this changeling pool. We have 12 slots available in the deck, and at the beginning of each game we play with this build, we randomly take out 12 of these cards, shuffle them in, and then we play with our changeling tribal deck. So we've got some changes to the deck, we've got some changes and additions to the changeling pool, and we're continuing to go all in with the flavor tribal, I'm sorry, with the tribal flavor, the tribal flavor, man that was hard to say, of this build. All right, we're going to start things off with the changeling pool. We are going to add two new tribes to our 106 tribe changeling pool. Let's begin with tribe 107. Welcome to the changeling pool, the detective tribe. Here we have detective of the month, which is a two, three human detective for two and one blue mana. It has the ascend mechanic, which means that if we control 10 or more permanents, we have the city's blessing for the rest of the game. As long as we have the city's blessing, detectives you control cannot be blocked. This is EDH. It's not hard to get the city's blessing. And once we have it, we don't lose it until the game is over. And the game will end with us winning. Remember, all of our shapeshifters with Changeling are all creature types at all times. That means that they are detectives and they will be unblockable with the city's blessing. And whenever we draw our second card each turn, we get to create a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token. That is an ability that we could have happen on our side of the battlefield in this build, but more importantly, we now have the detective tribe in the changeling pool. Tribe number 107, welcome to MTG Burgeoning's Shapeshifter with Changeling Tribal Deck. Actually, maybe we should do something like this. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Detectives are in. Tribe number 108. Welcome to our changeling build, the Minotaur Tribe. We have Sethron, the Herloon General. Here we have a 4-4 legendary Minotaur Warrior for three and two red mana. Whenever Sethron or another non-token Minotaur enters the battlefield under our control, we create a 2-3 red Minotaur creature token. We can pay 2 in either a black or a red mana, and Minotaurs we control get plus 1, plus 0, and gain menace and haste until end of turn. And note, we can pay that ability multiple times if needed, although double menace and double haste might mean that we can attack straight from our hand, the plus 1, plus 0 will continue to to stack up. All right, Sethron, you're going to give our guys tokens. You're going to give our guys mace. You're going to give them a haste, a buffer to the power. You are in as creature type number 108. Welcome aboard the Minotaur Tribe. 
All right, two new tribes being added, the Detectives and the Minotaurs. Next up, we have a Challenger. We are replacing one of the current tribal leaders in this build with one who is better. That happens here at MTG Burgeoning. Every set that comes out is a chance to replace one of the tribal leaders with someone who is stronger. Happens every day, happens all the time. Well, it's happening right here and right now. Which tribe is getting a changeover? Well, folks, the tribe is the Dog Tribe. The past tribal leader was Pack Leader. It was a 2-2 dog for one and one white mana. It gave other dogs we control plus one plus one. And whenever Pack Leader attacked, we prevented all combat damage that would be dealt this turn to dogs we control. That means it protected itself. Very, very nice ability here. Although, it is a combat ability. The Anthem effect is nice on a body of that's just two mana value. And, of course, the damage is prevented whenever the pack leader attacks. So that also meant that all of our shapeshifters with changelings, because they're also dogs, they were going to have the damage prevented to them as well. All right, that was a pretty solid leader. Some dog representative is going to have to do a lot more for us than giving it a, a an anthem effect and some protection. So who is replacing pack leader in the tribal, I'm sorry, in the changeling pool? Well, that is going to be, come on camera, get in the game here. There we go. There we go. Sophia Dogged Detective. We have a 3-4 Legendary Human Detective for one and Bant Colors. That's a green, a white, and a blue mana. When Sophia Dogged Detective enters the battlefield, we create Tiny, a Legendary 2-2 Green Dog Detective Creature Token with Trample. All right, so Sophia is bringing a friend. We can pay one generic mana and sacrifice an artifact token to put a plus one plus one counter on each dog we control. Whenever a dog we control deals combat damage to a player, we create a food token, and then we investigate. So as long as we're slipping dogs in for combat damage, we're getting a food token, and we're getting a clue token. And we can utilize Sophia's ability to sacrifice those to give a plus one, to put a plus one, plus one counter on each dog we control. Very, very nice here. We're getting two bodies for a total combined power and toughness of five, six. Stretched across just the investment of four mana when Sophia comes into play. And we can just make them bigger and bigger. We're getting foods. We're getting clue tokens, which means if we need the life, if we need to gain some life, we can utilize the foods. If we want to get some cards into our hand, we can crack those clues to investigate. Or we're just going to sacrifice them and put plus one, plus one counters on every dog we control, which means every shapeshifter with changeling we control. There you have it. I think Sophia is stronger overall in this build, and it's going to have a much bigger impact than what Pack Leader could. And we're going to go with Sophia. But if for some reason Sophia cannot hold her own during our time in playing with this Changeling Tribal deck, be on the lookout because we could come back to the Up and Up series to replace Sophia with the pack leader. We've done it before. It might happen again. Of course, you can let me know about these changes in the comment section below. All right, MTG Burgeoning fans, we got a few more cards going into the deck now. That means that some cards are coming out. The first card going in, it is Flamekin Village. This is another way in which we're going all in with the flavor. Here we have a land that enters the battlefield, and when it does, we may reveal an elemental card from our hand, and if we don't, Flamekin Village enters the battlefield tapped. Remember, all of our shapeshifters with Changeling are elementals, so as long as we have one in our hand, Flamekin Village comes into play untapped. We can tap to add a red mana to our mana pool, or we can pay a red mana and tap this land to give target creature haste until end of turn. Note that the target creature does not have to be one of ours. We could politic with one of our opponents and give one of their creatures haste. With the Flamekin Village going into the build, coming out... 
is a basic mountain. Well, each tap for a red mana, it should be very easy to have Flamekin Village come into play untapped. Plus, we get that sweet, sweet haste ability. That may be one of the easiest swaps we could make in this Changeling Tribal build. The next card going into the 99 of this deck, it is Temple of the Dragon Queen. This is a land that when it ETBs, we may reveal a dragon card from our hand. Once again, remember, all of our shapeshifters have changelings, so they're all creature types at all times. Very similar to what we said about Flamekin Village. When we do, Temple of the Dragon Queen enters the battlefield untapped if we reveal the dragon card this way, or if we control a dragon. Once again, if one of those changelings are on our side of the battlefield, Temple of the Dragon Queen is coming into play untapped. And as it comes into play, we tap, I'm sorry, when it comes into play, we choose a color, and then we tap to add one mana of the chosen color. This can come down and provide immediate mana fixing abilities, maybe not so much for the long term of the game, but more for the short term. And again, we should very easily be able to do this because we'll have a dragon in our hand or a dragon on our side of the battlefield. With that land going into the build as we continue to go all in with the flavor, it's going to replace a basic forest because let's face it, it could tap for a green mana, so we're going to get rid of a green mana producing land, or it could tap for a different color. It could be any color that we want. We're going to pick the color as it comes into play, so we're going to make sure that we balance as best we can. So with the Temple of the Dragon Queen going in, we are going to Ixnay a basic forest. All right, next up, the next card going in as we continue our pursuit for all things flavor in this build, it is Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Here we have a land that taps for a colorless mana, or it taps for one mana of any color, but we can only spend this mana to cast a dragon creature spell. Once again, we have those. They're called our Shapeshifters with Changeling. We can pay two generic mana and tap the Haven to sacrifice it, and then we can return a target Dragon Creature card or Eugen Planeswalker card from our graveyard to our hand. Spoiler alert, Eugen is not in this build, but our Shapeshifters with Changeling very well might be. So we have a way in which to recur one of them straight to our hand just by paying two generic mana, tapping, and sacrificing sacrificing Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Our flavorful pursuit continues, and with that land going in, we are going to replace a Ketri, I'm sorry, a Savai Triome. Here, this was a land that comes into play tapped. It gives us one of three different colors of mana, and we could cycle it away for three generic mana if needed. With the Haven of the Spirit Dragon giving us one mana of any color that we can only use to cast our creature spells, our dragon creature spells, this might be a little bit of a tough pill to swallow, because here we are potentially slightly weakening the overall balance of our mana by removing a land that provides one of three colors to use to cast any of the spells, for a land that gives us one mana of any color just for our dragon creature spells. Well, like I said, we're going all in with the flavor of this build. The flavor is tribal, so we have to find some room to force the tribal in, and we're going to see how it all ends up during gameplay and during testing. Okay, so where does our quest for tribal flavor take us next? Well, we have another land, our last land of this video. It is Sliver High. This is gonna be pretty similar to Haven of the Spirit Dragon. It taps for a colorless mana, or it taps for one mana of any color that we can only spend to cast a Sliver spell. Similar to the dragon spells of Haven of the Spirit Dragon, remember once again, our shapeshifters with changelings are slivers. We can also pay five generic mana and tap Sliver Hive to create a 1-1 one, one colorless sliver creature token. But we can only activate this ability if we control a sliver, which we will because, once again, shapeshifters with changeling. With the Sliver Hive going in, the aforementioned Whoopsie of Ketria Triome is going to be replaced. Everything we said about the Savai Triome will apply to the Ketria Triome, and we'll see how those two specific lands, the Haven and the Hive, let's see how they hold up without having the two Triomes in the 99 of this build. 
<clears throat> okay, we're down to our last two, and uh, this is where the depowering of the deck is really going to take shape. It's really going to be noticeable here, but like we've been harping throughout the last several episodes of the Up and Up series when it comes to this Morophin deck, we're going all in with Tribal. Keep that in mind. The fifth and final card going into the 99 of this build for this video, it is Progenitor's Icon. Here we have an artifact for three generic mana, and when it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type. We tap to add one mana of any color, which is a good thing, because over here, we are limiting our mana flexibility, particularly when it comes into play with the lands that we've taken out, the two Triomes. All right, and in addition, we can tap the Progenitor's Icon to have the next spell of the chosen type we cast this turn can be cast as though it had Flash. So this is almost a built-in Flash enabler for any creature type that we chose as Progenitor's Icon comes into play. This will allow us to have all kinds of combat chicanery and tricks, and it's really going to cause some headaches for our opponents. But And let's not overlook the fact that this is going to really open up some opportunities for when we cast our shapeshifters with Changeling. And also, let's not overlook the fact that we get that one mana of any color. With one artifact going into play that provides us mana, another artifact is going to come out, keeping in mind that the flavorful addition of Progenitor's Icon helps us to push the tribal flavor a little bit more. It's going to replace a non-tribal card, a non-tribal flavor card, Oh, in Mana Crypt. Yes, we all know the power of Mana Crypt, and here we are definitely depowering the overall deck. However, it's all in the pursuit of changeling and tribal goodness. So, Mana Crypt is out, Progenitor's Icon is in. One last change for the changeling deck? Ha ha! Pun definitely intended. The last card going in, it is Poetic Ingenuity. Here we have an enchantment for 2-1-1 red mana. Whenever one or more dinosaurs we control attack, we create that many treasure tokens. Now this card right here, before we even get to the rest of the, the rest of the text, this card right here is going to really help to balance out the loss of mana flexibility that we saw when we took out the Savai and the Ketria Triome. This will help us to accelerate our mana, and also note, it says whenever one or more dinosaurs attack that we control, we create that many treasure tokens. The treasure tokens aren't tapped, and it's not one of those abilities that says whenever one or more create a tre treasure token. This is, we send three dinosaurs into combat, we create three treasure tokens. Very, very powerful card in this build, particularly because as we continue to drive home our flavor theme, all of our shapeshifters with Changeling are also dinosaurs. But we're not done yet. There's one more little block of text here on this enchantment. Whenever we cast an artifact spell, we create a 3-1 red dinosaur creature token. This ability triggers only once each turn. Yes, we do have some artifacts in this build, so we will be able to take advantage of the second block of text. But make no mistake about it, the reason why Poetic Ingenuity is getting slam dunked into the 99 of this Morphin build is because of the mana acceleration we realize from those treasure tokens. All right, MTGBC. <clears throat> if the last swap wasn't uh, socks getting knocked off, this last one might do it. Remember, it's all for the flavor of tribal. With the oh-so-tribally flavorful poetic ingenuity going into the build, a non-flavor card is coming out. And that is going to be the Great Henge. Here we had a legendary artifact for 7 and 2 green mana, and everybody knows what the Great Henge is capable of. It costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. We tap this to add 2 green mana, and we gain 2 life. And whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, we put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, and we draw a card. Very, very powerful. We all know what this can do. 
What it doesn't do is synergize in any way with a tribal build. There are no creature types. There are no specifics. Poetic Ingenuity, it has it. Progenitor's Icon, it has it. And unfortunately, the Great Henge and its predecessor, the I'm sorry, and the preceding card, Mana Crypt, they both do not have it. So, with the overall scope being a consistent all-end with all things flavor, non-flavorly, changely, I'm sorry, non-tribal cards are coming out to make room for the flavor. All right, MTGBC, I know this is going to upset a great number of you. Just go easy on me in the comment section below, keeping in mind this is the pursuit of all things tribal. We're going all in with the tribal of this changeling build. You gotta give me that. This is MTG Burgeoning, a yo channel for all things magic. <laughs>